we've got our um, nuclear bases properly positioned within a base pair, but uh, how do we uh, position the base pairs within a DNA spiral? Well, for that, we're going to have to put in uh, some guidelines, some uh, construction lines, scaffolding, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it a center line and a center point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this nitrogen with this nitrogen. And why those two? Well, because those are the connecting points with our, uh, our DNA backbone. Remember, we used to have a hydrogen bond here for uh, thymine, and we took it out, and now we're connecting to a uh, carbon in the uh, DNA backbone. Likewise, over here with adenine, we had a hydrogen bond there, and we replaced it with a carbon. Well, actually, we just connected it to the carbon in the uh, DNA backbone. So uh, these uh, nitrogens here and here are uh, the connecting points of our, uh, our base pair with uh, the uh, DNA helix uh, backbone. Okay, well, let's uh, go into x-ray because we're going to connect these things, and let's... Uh, well, we don't need to go all the way, but we do need to go into the base pair because we're going to include this uh, central line that we're going to make inside the uh, the base pair. So first thing is I'm going to zoom in so I can make sure that I get into the uh, center of this nitrogen and click there and then go over here and click there. Okie doke. As I move out, you can see that um, we've got this nice little line here between uh, these uh, two connecting points. And we need to find the center point of that because that's going to be how we're going to pivot when, we got it, when we've got a spiral. And we just move our pencil along the line until we uh, see the dot turn green and it announces that it's a midpoint. All right. Now, uh, it's kind of tricky because if you uh, move your pencil up, uh, you might get a red line. And that means you're actually on the... Um, the y-axis and we want to be on the z-axis which is the one going up so I'm going to go up like that I, I had a, a blue line and again it turns red but if I move the the pencil a bit I the line turns blue and that's fine right there so now we've got a uh, center line with a center point and I will uh, make this into a group okay so what does that do for us well um, we can copy like this and then we can paste on top of it and you can see that they're very easy to stack now we, we don't have any guesswork we can just stack them uniformly and by the way the the angles and everything that I'm using here the distances they're they're just things that I'm throwing out we'll, we'll figure out what are the proper angles later but for now I just wanted to show how these uh, these uh, center lines and center points stick together and make everything easy to uh, move around well, what happens if we were to uh, make a spiral? Well, before I get into that, I, I just want to show what, what happens um, if we were to make a straight ladder. And then you, you can see what would happen if we made a spiral uh, instead. Maybe we can get out of that. Okay, if I were to make a ladder using this system, um, you can see that with these uh, two base pairs stacked, I can go straight up like that, and that's fine. But um, what would happen if we had the complementary base pair up here? That's that's not so nice because um, now our connecting point is over here and it's still down here. And you can see now we would be tilted like that. And if we were to make a just a straight, oops, well, if I move that there, even if I move that there, uh, you can see that uh, it's still slanted like that, whereas before it was going straight up. And so we could imagine having alternating base pairs and our... Um, backbone would just be kind of rickety because it would go straight up and then to the side. And this is just the example when we're going uh, straight up for a ladder. What if we were doing a spiral? It would be even worse. But there's a way to fix that. Uh, we, we need to align this uh, center line with um, the x-axis. We've got this right here. We've got our center line right here, but it is not yet aligned with the x-axis. You can see that it uh, goes down like this. It's slanted. And we need it um, parallel to the x-axis. And that's easy to do. We just uh, select the rotate tool and then I go down here and I click on the line and um, now I can bring this up and now it says on green axis that's where I want to be. The green axis is the x-axis and now the um, this uh, center line is parallel with the x-axis and these two connecting points are on um, the, um, 
the x-axis. So if I were to flip this over, they would be parallel too, except for one thing, and that is, you may have noticed, our group is skewed. When we uh, uh, made this, when we made the center line parallel with the x-axis, we ended up skewing the group, but that's okay. We can unskew, or actually we're, we're just going to get rid of the group, and then we'll make a new group. And the new group contains exactly the same stuff as the old group, but the new group is um, aligned with the XYZ axis. So there we there we have it. And if we uh, were to uh, use the complementary base pair and put that on top, we we see that um, now the uh, connecting nitrogens are right on top of each other. So if we were to uh, make a spiral here, let's say like so. Oops. Like so, um, it would be a smooth spiral, and uh, that that's where we want to go. So um, that's how we would uh, build the spiral of the base pairs. And there's a little bit more I want to show you with uh, uh, these center lines, and I'll do that in another video. And then we'll start uh, working on making the outer spiral of the uh, the DNA backbone.